Hi, uh, my name is Duncan Haldane, and today I'm going to demonstrate software-defined electronics, or how to generate hardware designs using reusable software. So here I have open a generator, and a generator is a piece of code that produces a circuit board design when you run it. And on the left I've just got an interactive visualization of what I'm building. So we start off with some imports here, uh, set up global variables like the operating temperature of my design and what I want our solvers to optimize for when they're making uh, design choices. And then inside here, I have code that when I run this code, uh, it produces a hardware design. So everything in here gets turned into my design. And this first statement says instantiate uh, an example resistor named R. Then I set up a board, so it's 12 by 12 millimeters, four layers, and then view the design. So every time I run this, it's going to produce a new design. So I can put down, let's say, a group of 10 example resistors, reload it, and I've got my blob of resistors. And crucially, we can also export from this. So export CAD, uh, we'll call it example. And let's go to KiCad. Reload. Okay, now with this line even in there, every time I run my generator, it's going to produce a new CAD package which we can see here. So it's produced a project named example, and example is still KiCad. You can open the schematic. It's got you know my blob of resistors down here, and we've got the board. And these are, it's a true CAD package linked as if a human designer made this. So you can produce a design with as much automation as you want, and then get it back into the CAD format that you're used to. Okay, um, so let's start using some more powerful functions. Instead of saying uh, resistor, let's see, say we want a capacitor. Uh, so we'll use our generic capacitor function, and let's say we want one microfarad capacitor. Okay, so now when I run this, it's going to query a database of a little over 800,000 capacitors and find an optimal one that matches the cheapest possible one microfarad capacitor that uh, is suitable for this operating range. And you can layer on tolerance and voltage and dielectric if you want, uh, or specify the MPN directly. Um, and then it returns a result. And let's say we want, I don't know, 50 of these capacitors, and we can create a design programmatically. So this is embedded in a full programming language, Ryan 0249. So we're going to net these capacitors end to end. So C of I use the first pin, and then C of I plus 1, P2. Okay, so now I should end up with a snake of capacitors connected end to end. Okay, there's our design. And let's say instead that we wanted to optimize for area instead of cost. What's the smallest possible set of capacitors? That's subject to Thing. I have manufacturing constraints set that I don't want to go below 0201. And yeah, so we end up with a chain of 50 0201 capacitors. So that's pretty good. Um, and so we've got this library of kind of software functions that, that create hardware. And we can start getting more towards what we see in real design. So let's put down a crystal. And we've got a database that comes along with this. And uh, yeah. So here's a, here's a crystal, we'll use a component, and if we look at the definition of this, you can see that under the hood, everything is open source software. So the definition of this component is, is right here. Uh, the symbol is programmatically constructed, the package is programmatically constructed. So you have uh, parametric reuse all the way down. And let's start doing useful design work. So one thing you have to do to a crystal is add caps to it. So you can also write functions that do these calculations for you. So let's just add our caps to the crystal using that reusable generator. So I can write this one function, which is add crystal caps, and then it's going to you know, do its uh, calculations to, with the load capacitance and straight capacitance, select uh, capacitors of the right value, and then automatically net them up. And all I have to do is say add crystal caps. Uh, we can also see reuse at the level of uh, full circuits. So let's say we want an LDO. Again, pull from the open database. Uh, let's say analog devices. And use the ADM 7150. 
And this is a parametric module, so all I have to do is give it the output voltage I want, and reload. And taking a look at this function, you can see that we have programmatic circuits. So you can wrap a sub-circuit up, uh, you can put sub-circuits inside your sub-circuits, and then add all the capacitors, create the local netlist, and then put this whole thing down as a unit. And again, we still have our benefits of automatic component selection. So I've got my optimal set of components working in this operating temperature, optimizing for the smallest possible size. And every time I run this, it creates a new design. Okay, so now let's look at a more complex design. And I'm gonna go ahead and start running this. And while it's running, I'm gonna explain what it's doing. So here, we're gonna instantiate our top level components. Uh, we'll have an FMC connector, uh, two Ethernet jacks, and an FPGA. So this is going to be a device that processes a data flow from the FMC, pipes it into the FPGA, put, and also connects to Ethernet. Instead of uh, digging in and like designing a tree of power regulators, I'm just going to say, system do that for me. So I um, power this device from 12 volts from the FMC connector, and then it's going to walk the design find all the loads, look at their voltages and current requirements and noise requirements, and then synthesize an optimal tree of regulators and then design the whole thing for me and connect it all up. I don't have to worry about that so much. And now we can start creating high-level connections. So here we connect a bus of 16 LVDS from the FPGA to the FMC connector. I don't have to worry about concrete pin assignments. I could have them if I want, but I just want 16 LVDS pairs and the pin assignment solver is going to find those automatically for me. And finally, let's connect to Ethernet. So I get RJMII from the FPGA and connect it to Ethernet on the Ethernet jack. And I use a connect statement. And when I use, say, connect phi, it's going to automatically add a phi between these interfaces, power it, connect it to the FPGA, add the control pins. All of the detailed design work that you need to actually instantiate this design happens automatically because my design is reusable software. Finally, uh, you can add geometric constraints to lock down the, pa the positions of connectors. And here's our resulting design. So uh, here's our FMC, the FPGA, hundreds of nets created, all the components selected, uh, all the calculations done for the power regulators to set the output voltage correctly, all built on this reusable stack of software. So you run your, you run your generator and you get a hardware design out. And to finish it off, we can show, yeah, we've got our CAD generated for the Ethernet connector. So we've got our, our layout, and we've got the schematic generated as well with automatically banked symbols and routed schematics generated for you. So this has been our demonstration of JITPCB, software-defined electronics. Use reusable code to generate hardware designs, skip the low-level work, leave it up to solvers. So we can be more productive make fewer errors in our designs, and just be able to design better.